Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Intel's ARC GPUs get this, Ryzen 6000 and RX 6000S get benchmarked, Newegg scam gamers Nexus, and for the first time ever, AMD just surpassed Intel. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel's ARC GPUs are so far rumored to come in Q2, possibly a release in Q1, but leaks suggest it would be more of a paper launch. Either way, that means we should begin seeing more leaks about the cards, and that looks to be the case. In a new report originally from 4 Onyx and later by video cards, Intel has added an interesting feature to their Linux i915 graphics drivers. Specifically, it adds support for a fifth display. And what's interesting about that is that none of the leaked engineering samples show five display outs. Like pretty much all gaming GPUs, it had a maximum of four. As Video Cards mentions, it could support a fifth via USB-C, but at least so far, none of the samples showed one. Basically, this sounds like Intel could be releasing workstation variants of their DG2 GPUs, something similar to AMD's Radeon Pro line of GPUs. And if that's the case, Intel is planning to go all in with their discrete cards. This very clearly isn't some half-baked attempt by Intel. The company is very serious, but of course, whether that's enough is tough to say. Next, I've got a huge thanks to this video sponsor, Extra, the world's first debit card that actually lets you build credit, and there's no credit check to get it. Now, we all know how important good credit is, from buying a house, a car, to even getting good insurance rates, your credit score affects nearly everything. But a ton of people aren't even able to get a credit card, and that's where Extra comes in. All you have to do is connect your Extra card to your bank account. They give you a spending limit based on your real-time balance, then when you use your Extra debit card, they take the money out the next business day. And at the end of the month, Extra sends it to credit bureaus. That means no overspending, and there's no interest. Plus, you get points just like a regular credit card. So don't wait and sign up for Extra with the link in my description and start building your credit with a debit card today. Next up for today, we have one of the first benchmarks of AMD's new Ryzen 6000 CPU with their new RX 6000 S GPU. For those who don't know, AMD recently announced a slew of new mobile chips back at CES. Their Ryzen 6000 parts are based on the company's new Zen 3 Plus architecture, while the RX 6000 S series of GPUs are made for slim notebooks and take quite a bit less power draw. Well, in a new Puget System benchmark found and shared by BenchLeaks, an upcoming a Zeus Zephyrus G14 was tested. The future notebook included a Ryzen 9 6900HS and an RX 6800S, and they were benchmarked in Puget Bench for Photoshop. Now, what's unreal is that they actually beat the 12900H with an RTX 3080. Of course, these are different laptops, and it's tough to compare them like this because thermals can vary differently from one notebook to another. But the big part here is that both the 6900HS and 6800S are effectively throttled parts. The HS is a lower TDP CPU, and the 6000S GPUs are made for thin and light notebooks. So regardless, this is impressive. We'll ultimately have to see what the pricing looks like for these notebooks before we can determine just how good they are. Next up is a story that's been going on for a little while now between Gamers Nexus and Newegg. And while it's not completely over, I think it's important to discuss. It all started when Gamers Nexus purchased a $500 motherboard from Newegg. But before it got to them, they fixed the issue they had and didn't need the board anymore. Luckily, Newegg has a 30-day return policy, so Gamers Nexus simply returned it without even opening the package. The problem is that when Newegg got it, they claimed that it was broken, so Gamers Nexus wouldn't be getting his money back. Of course, he knew that was impossible given he literally didn't even open it. Now, I will say when he bought it, he wasn't aware that it was open box because Newegg has recently changed how they show it on the site. But that's obviously irrelevant because it should still work. So we got the box back, and it seems pretty clear that Newegg didn't even look at it before they sold it. From what I understand, they actually shipped it off to the manufacturer, didn't get it repaired, and just sold it broken. Then they wouldn't take it back. 
And the worst part is that a lot of customers have had a similar experience. Luckily, Gamers Nexus could actually do something about it by telling their audience. And thanks to that, Newegg has officially issued an apology and are promising to change their policy. Now, Gamers Nexus is still meeting with the company to give them a chance to discuss it, so we'll see how that goes. Ultimately, I hope it works out, because it would suck if the only place you could go online for hardware was Amazon. Sure, there's still Micro Center, but they're mostly in-store. Regardless, this is obviously unacceptable, so Newegg definitely needs to fix it. And if you've ever had this issue, let me know down in the comments below. And lastly for today, the unbelievable has happened. Thanks to a recent deal that saw AMD acquire Z-Lynx for a whopping $49 billion, AMD is officially a larger company in terms of market cap than Intel. And this is the first time in the company's history that this has ever happened. The acquisition of Z-Lynx added 428 million new AMD shares, bringing it up to 1.628 billion. That gave AMD a market cap of 197.75 billion dollars compared to Intel's 197 7.24 billion. Of course, markets fluctuate quite a bit, but as of when this article from Tom's Hardware was published, AMD is actually worth more than Intel. With that said, market cap is only one way of valuing a company, but this is a huge deal. Just keep in mind that Intel still has a higher share of the x86 market along with more revenue, but a higher evaluation means that investors are more hopeful in AMD's future than Intel. Let's just say Intel should be scrambling to do better. So while that does it for today, like I said earlier, if you've had a similar issue with Newegg in the past, and of course, what did you think about the news today? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!